what if we had 31 notes? Let's talk Edo step notation and the circle of diesis. EDO, or EDO, is an acronym for Equal Divisions of the Octave, and refers to a tuning system where an octave is divided into a specific number of equal steps. For example, 31 EDO will divide the octave into 31 equally spaced steps. 17 EDO will divide into 17 equal steps, 12 EDO will divide into 12 steps, and so on and so on. This term is practically synonymous with TET, or T-E-T, -E as in 12 tet or 12 tone equal temperament. Although I guess on a technical level, there is a subtle distinction in terms, which is that tet kind of implies an intention that a given tuning system has tempered out a specific comma, whereas the term Edo does not make this assumption or implied judgment. So in practical terms out in the real world, they're pretty much interchangeable. Edo step notation is a simple way to identify and communicate different steps or microtonal intervals. The system is fairly straightforward. Let's apply it to 31. We start with a single reference point, zero. You can think of this as your root note or just a single point of focus in a given moment. Next, let's populate what I call our Edo box with all possible steps in a single octave of 31. We read this box from left to right, top to bottom. You might notice that it only goes up to 30, not 31. This is because step 31 is the octave, the same pitch class as zero. So you can call this Edo step either zero or 31. 31 has a large amount of steps compared to 12. So to keep it simple and to prioritize clear communication, I'll often animate the Edo box to contain only the relevant notes that I'm playing or speaking about. Generally, it'll look something like this. the Edo box contains all of the notes of the subset or scale we are in. The notes being played are emphasized in color for clarity. This is a bit of an aside, but I often get asked how I animate these Edo boxes or like what kind of program I'm using for these visuals. And unfortunately, the answer is I do it by hand. So I'll mock up the visuals in Photoshop and then animate them in Premiere Pro frame by frame. Sometimes you'll encounter Edo step in the wild written like this. This is X number of steps of whatever Edo you're in. For example, this is zero steps of 31, this is 15 steps of 31, and this is five steps of 31. Take note that we're using backslashes when describing Edo step, but forward slashes when we describe frequency ratios. This is kind of an unspoken rule, but it really does help us distinguish between the two easily. Each of these intervals can either be named by diatonic categories or frequency ratios. I'll put a link to this interval chart as a resource in the description of this video. I know there's probably a ton of new and unfamiliar intervals for you to sink your teeth into, but try not to get too hung up on what things are called and remember to always prioritize instead what is heard. Remember the music must always come first and the theory will inevitably follow to communicate it. Let me show you how to use Edo step to notate a chord. If I were to say to you that the super major chord in 31 was Edo stepped as 0, 11, 18, this means that you can take your Edo box or 31 interval chart and select 0 as your root, go up 11 steps for your super major third interval, and finally go up 18 steps from your root to get your fifth. For all you out there working with piano rolls, wondering how to, you know, practically implement this stuff, unfortunately, most DAWs have an understandable bias towards 12 tet. This makes being able to identify important intervals like a fifth or an octave visually difficult. I can't change my piano roll to be more 31 friendly, so I rely on Edo Step to help me map out the intervals I want. Here I have my virtual piano loaded with a 31 Edo tuning file, so if I wanted to go back and build that super major chord, I'd first pick a note, any note, doesn't really matter, wherever you want to start from. Count up 11 steps to get our super major third interval. 
and then keep going until I hit that 18th step from the root, and there you go. The super major chord is alive and well. Since Edo step is movable and not a fixed system, zero can be any note that we select. So if we wanted to put our root on C and sounded 0, 11, 18, we would get a C super major chord. We could just as easily put this on G and get a G super major chord. The implication being that Edo step is very, very helpful in describing the structure of a microtonal chord or pattern of a subset rather than defining specific letter notes. If we kept the distance between each of these intervals the same and transposed it over a few notes, you'll notice that the Edo step numbers change. Instead of 0, 11, 18, we now have 5, 16, 23. But what you'll find is that the super major chord structure remains intact because the intervolic distance between each note of the triad remains static regardless of a positional shift. In other words, this is still a super major chord, but it's a super major chord that's being defined by its distance from our prime root, zero. Usually I find it a lot easier to just define all my chords on zero and then just make a little note about what the reference pitch is. A good way of doing this is by mapping out our tuning onto a circle. You might generally call this an Edo circle, but when specifically applied to 31 like this, I like to think of it as the circle of diesis or the diesis circle. This works the same way as our Edo box. Starting from zero, it's read clockwise, ending at the octave back on zero or 31. The diesis circle is definitely a, a lot easier to take in visually compared to the full force of a completed Edo box. Here's the super major chord again now on the circle. This lets us more easily notice patterns in harmonic structures and combined with an adjacent Edo box maximizes efficient communication of different microtonal ideas. Even if it does look just a little bit like witchcraft. Why do I call it the circle of diesis? Well, it has to do with this tiny little step. One out of 31. This is the smallest step we can get in 31 Edo. This itty bitty little micro interval is called the diesis. I've been kind of teeter tottering on pronunciation here. I've heard some folks in the community say diesis. I've heard some say diesis. I've heard diesis, of course, not to be mistaken with diocese, the Catholic thing, but I don't know. Maybe it's just an accent thing. I'll leave it to the comments. How do you guys think we should pronounce this word? I'm gonna go with diesis for the remainder of this video because I think it creates the most amount of separation from this word. So for clarity's sake, uh, until I'm voted out by the majority, I'm going with diesis. Anyway, this tiny little interval is the fundamental unit of 31. Chain enough of them together and you'll eventually arrive at the chromatic 31 scale. There are a multitude of ways of conceptualizing, building, and understanding 31. Personally, I like the approach that Bill Coates took in his 1992 book, Diesis, an introduction to the temperament of 31 notes to each octave. Very creative title. Anyway, he takes a more historical approach, leaning on the works of Vincentino all the way back to some Greek theorists like Ptolemy. Bill describes the diesis as what happens when you split the whole tone into five separate parts. Let's investigate that. The whole tone in 12 tet is 200 cents. The whole tone in 31 is 193.5 cents. If we divide that in half, splitting the whole tone evenly into two parts, you'll get the semitone at roughly 100 cents. Split the whole tone into quarters and you'll get the quarter tone, about 50 cents. This is all fairly standard stuff. However, what happens if you split that whole tone into an odd number of parts instead? Say five. Well, if you do this, logically you'll get what is called the fifth tone, which in 31 works out to be 38.7 cents. The fifth tone is the diesis. And by virtue of it being an uneven division of the whole tone, some really interesting things occur downstream of that split, namely the creation of two different kinds of semitones. The chromatic semitone at around 77.4 cents created by stacking two diesis and the diatonic semitone, which spans 116.1 cents. This is created by stacking three diesis. Two different types of semitones, one large, one small. A 3-2 division evoked from 31's most fundamental building block, culminating 
in the circle of diesis and a sea of rich, colorful harmonic options to scale smith within it. The consequences of these new diatonic and chromatic semitones are that enharmonic equivalents like C sharp and D flat now become two distinctly different notes, which gives us new flavors of what is in 12 the same note. As you can imagine, this allows us to bend the fabric of our familiar scales, harmony, and chords in really interesting and unique ways. You can accentuate certain qualities of a scale by shrinking its intervals in some parts and expanding it in others, allowing you to craft unique to you scales through the modularity of the circle of diesis. If you're interested in a deeper dive of how this all works or how you can take some of these scale smithing techniques and apply it to your music, consider checking out my lectures over on Patreon. Every time I post a new video that wades into the esoteric Zen harmonic waters, I inevitably get a couple comments along the lines of, I never understand more than a tenth of a percent of your videos, and yet I keep watching them whenever the algorithm decides I'm due one, and always enjoy the weird sounds. Thanks. That's unfortunate, but very understandable. I've spoken about it a few times on this channel, but like I, I totally get that perspective. This is not the kind of stuff that you'll be learning about in your traditional track through Western musical education. The biggest hurdle that we face today in the Western microtonal music community is access. It's access when it comes to instruments and software, but also when it comes to theory and the communication of our ideas. And when we're just getting acquainted with all these wonderful notes in between the notes and some asshat comes out of nowhere and says something like, so what we have here might be better described as a polysystemic merger between a 12-based diatonic scale and a 31-based hexatonic Mothra subset. It can make us feel overwhelmed, out of depth, and most importantly, get us stuck on the theory when we should be getting stuck on the sound. With that in mind, I'd like to make a short series, this video being the first of, covering the fundamentals of 31 Edo, so that when I inevitably say something like, if we borrow this subdivision grouping from this section of New Second 23 and graft it onto New Second 7, you can click on a card that'll appear on screen that'll take you to a video like this one for further clarification that'll give you a solid foundation to understand the topic at hand. I don't intend on taking outside sponsorships for this kind of resource heavy video specifically. I really want this series, this introduction to 31, to be a long-term educational resource for you guys, so I don't want to muddy the waters with it. That said, I hope it's fair that I do a quick shout out here at the end for my Patreon because the content is obviously directly relevant. So look out for more in this series. As we go, I'll compile these intro to 31 videos into a playlist on my channel that'll be in in order for quick and easy access. And of course, if you want to support me or dive deeper into the crazy mind-blowing Harmony of 31, consider signing up under the microtonalist here over on my Patreon. Link will be in the description and the pinned comment of this video. We await you with open arms and of course, a whole lot of notes.